bit of a shock, but um, you know, stay with me and we'll get through this together. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I look after everything product at Donuts, I've everything from user testing all the way through to um, design the screens. So from a company of 6,000, um, I'm coming from a company of four people. Uh, we've just raised some money, so I can actually hire a designer now, which is amazing. I can make these slides look a lot better than I did. Um, so, um, so it was, it was Saturday, and I was thinking, you know, what should I, what should I talk about at this event? Uh, so I messaged my friend Willow, and I was like, you know, I'm off to go and do this presentation at a cafe because uh, I haven't got any internet in my flat. Um, so what, what am I going to say? And she, she gave me the advice: just tell a good story. And Willow's over there now, and she's cringing. Um, but um, yeah, tell a good story and leave the, leave the good stuff to, uh, to, the, to the proper CPO over there. Um, so I'll try and tell a good story um, about, uh, about Donut, where we've come from and where we're going. So how did I get here? I'm asking myself that right now. Um, so I started back in 2013 at a company called 3D Hubs in Amsterdam, where I was an intern looking at growth uh, and uh, gamifying the platform. And 3D Hubs was like a 3D printing marketplace so you could print something on someone else's 3D printer around the corner. Um, it was a great concept, they've now gone completely B2B, as it seems like that's a common product trend. Um, but um, it was a great place to start my career. And then I moved to a very, very small startup with just two people working on trying to solve the problem of uh, the housing crisis in London, which Berlin is now getting to grips with, I think, um, and trying to really, really invent um, how spare room was working at the time. The spare room was an awful experience, and we tried to do that. Ran out of money after six months and we, we closed up shop. And then I joined a big uh, company in London called List, which is e commerce meets Pinterest. Um, and you can create li lists of like black men's jumpers and women's red dresses. And I worked with a load of teams there to build internal tools to automatically build pages for the website. So that could be based on SEO rankings like uh, women's black Gucci dresses. We build a list automatically on the fly. And then I sold my soul to the devil. I joined um, a big consultancy firm called Accenture, where I was working on the agency side, building loads of different BC apps for big companies. I can't talk about those, because you know this is being filmed. Um, but yeah, so that's a picture of the team, <laughs> but that's all I can really say. It gave me a really good grounding in product. I think I learned the hard way that being in an agency trying to build product is really difficult, because you're not really building it for the user, you're building it for both your consultancy and the client and the user, and sometimes things get lost in translation really easily. So, in the evenings and the weekends, I started a startup with my friends called Pluto. Uh, it's for travel insurance for people that don't like travel insurance. Um, and actually, the guys have just raised their, their pre seed round in the UK. Um, but I, I really needed to get out of London and, and just try and start my own thing, so I moved to Berlin. Uh, and I joined a program here called Entrepreneur First. I think there's quite a few people here from Entrepreneur First. Put your hands up quick. Cheers guys for coming. <laughs> uh, so Entrepreneur First, if anyone doesn't know, it's a mix, it's sort of like The Hunger Games meets The Apprentice meets Love Island. I don't know if you have Love Island here. <laughs> so essentially they put 60 people in a room who they think have got potential, and then they say go and build businesses, right? And if they like them at the end, they give you some money to get going. Um, so that was my first co-founder, Juan, who is over there, um, and we were exploring the ideas behind Death Tech at the time, which is, is coming soon. Um, and I went through loads of ideas and loads of founders, went through five founders in 12 weeks, five ideas in 12 weeks, some of them better than others. I think my, um, maybe my, uh, really, um, the app to help young people save for a pension was good, but I, I know nothing about pensions, um, and maybe uh, the Squarespace for AR shopping was maybe about 20 years ahead of its time. Um, and then I dropped out of the program, um, but I met uh, Neil and Jordan, who are the founders of Donut, um, and then um, started building uh, the company as it's today. And I remember sending uh, Jordan a, a message being like, you know, when you guys get some money, uh, remember me when you guys need someone to look after product. Um, and that's sort of the way I found myself here. And in the first meeting when we all sat down, um, we talked about, you know, how every decision we make should be informed by the user and not sort of our opinions about what we should be building and why, but by, by some sort of quantitative or qualitative user insight. Uh, and then we sort of started thinking, you know, let's take this one step further and build Donut with our users. And I think that's a very different uh, mentality than for our users, right? It's we're trying to build and co-create this with them, opposed to build it for them. And I really think there's a massive opportunity for this in FinTech and especially crypto, which if you go to most of these sites, they look dodge AF, right? And they, they don't instill any confidence in the user, and they're not built with any sort of UX in mind or any um, experience in mind. 
Uh, but to do this, we have to be open and transparent as possible, even if it's uncomfortable at times. So we're really trying to go down this route of being really transparent with our users at every stage and tell them exactly what we're building and why. So, I mean, there's lots of inspiration out there for this sort of stuff. I mean, Monzo does this best. It's sort of like my biggest product crush, um, but, you know, never applied to my job, um, job applications, so I'm not bitter at all. But um, I really remember back in 2016 when I, um, I got this email from them asking them to, asking me to help rename their company when they got sued for, for Mondo. Um, and I think this is a really good insight into like, how we can start to co-create uh, products with our users as opposed to just for them um, some design workshop where we think we know what they want. Um, and again, like the very early, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mondo. Uh, Monzo is big in the UK. It's probably it's the equivalent of N26 there. And, um, you know, back, at the, back in the day, they used to get people to come and physically collect the cards, but they weren't allowed to get their card before they actually talked to a product person or a user researcher to really understand what they wanted from that product. Lemonade is another great example in this space uh, around their transparency. So they, um, they tell people when they mess up, they're very open with the community, they share everything they're doing at all times. And I think this is something we really want to take into donor, especially in the crypto space, where there's a lot of uncertainty and there's a lack of trust. We really want to build that. So, I mean, there's a great, um, the latest post that Lemonade put out about how uh, the co founders and I screwed up the entire quarter um, is a really good read for anyone who wants to sort of understand how transparent they are with their users. Entering Elephant. So Elephant was the product, uh, product that uh, Jordan and Neil were working on to start with, and it was supposed to build a diversified portfolio of both stocks and shares and crypto for you all in one app. And this is what it looked like, and at the time it was just a landing page and a type form. Um, and this got them enough traction to be like, actually people really have this problem, right? People are really experiencing this problem, they don't know, they've got this money sat in the bank and they don't know what to do with it. How can we solve this? However, that's quite a big thing to try and build from the get-go, right? So we had to really think, like, what is the first thing that we want to build? So um, we looked down the wait list, which we'd grown, I think, to about probably 2,000 users at that point. They're quite small numbers compared to the delivery hero. Um, and we, we called 30 people each on the, on the wait list. So we reached out to them. We're like, we want to talk to you. We want to build this with you. Talk to us. And we started to identify some, some really big, like, key problems and some real pain points that were bigger than just um, sort of the, the wider aspects of investing. So the main problem is people don't know where to start with crypto investing, me included. I think that's why um, it's sort of a great challenge for me. I, know no I knew nothing about this space. Um, I still know um, very little. I think I'm learning every day. But I think that really helps me empathize with our users. Uh, and there's so much jargon, like blockchain, and token, and coin, and ICO, and I mean, I can't, yeah, decentralization. I mean, this goes over most people's heads, and they've turned off and they've left the website, right? So we really need to try and fix this problem as well. And the experience, right? Sometimes I think we, collect, we, we, did, we went through like trying to buy IOTA, which is a, this is a type of crypto asset, and it was in like 70, 70 steps. It was just crazy. How can we try and simplify this and really help users through that process? And also understanding what they're buying, right? It's really important. Um, and yeah, someone else was like, I need, felt like I needed a maths degree just to understand the website. This is not our feedback, by the way. This is the feedback for crypto. Uh, <laughs> and then trust is really important. Like, I'm not sure if I can trust it. I've heard many stories of people getting scammed. All the sites and dodges are super dodgy. It feels like I'm going to get ripped off. Um, and I'm not sure like what to buy, how much to invest, or what exchange to even use. Um, and then I've got my friend's brother to do it for me, which is super common and something I hear pretty much on every second uh, user phone call. I'm up on. So it is a pro by testing. I'm sorry if there's any designers in the room. This is. It's painful to look at. Um, this is sort of our first foray into this. Um, again, we had no budget for, for design, and I've never done it before, so excuse the pictures. But what this gave us was some really useful insights, and we just messaged people directly like this, being like, you know, we want to talk to you, we want to co-create this product with you. We've actually got a lot of like really loyal um, users, even though the product's not live, who will always reply to our emails for help with feedback and testing. Um, so obviously, we, we distilled those insights. We got the screens on the wall. And then we got some really good insights from that. So we want, our users want to see um, why we're asking for certain uh, assets of information from them and how we're going to store them. None of this is rocket science. It's just really interesting to hear from our users firsthand. Um, our users want to have a clear understanding of security of both their fiat and digital assets. Users who had a poor experience investing wanted to build their own. Um, information on each asset is important. Otherwise, we're going to lose people to the depths of the internet if they don't understand what these assets are. Um, and the dark color scheme was not inclusive and put someone off. I think that like, the description of it being incredibly male, 
kind of, kind of like confusing, which was sort of, um, you know, killed me inside a little bit. But uh, I've got a new appreciate now as a product person for design and getting critique on design. And a donut. So we thought, okay, with a new product, with a, new, with a, a massive pivot, we need to give it a name. So I turned to uh, my design friends and was like, how do I name this thing? So we, uh, uh, we came across the naming handbook, which is a great read if anyone's got to name a product or a company. Um, and we came up with loads of ideas, like kimchi and matcha and dough and soda. And like, we were like, really trying to play on that millennial mindset. Um, and then we started really narrowing it down. We were like, okay, high five, maybe not. Picnic could be. Ice cream, we thought it actually might melt, so like, it's not really good for a financial product. Um, and then tiramisu, would that work in all markets? So we, we focused on donut. Uh, why do we focus on donut? So uh, donuts are round, like a portfolio, slash coins, slash money, but they don't sound like Coinex or finance this. It's not trying to sound like some sort of like, horrible like, finance product. Um, it doesn't sound like additional fintech. Um, we want to stay away from coin or invest. Um, who doesn't like a donut? They're comforting, friendly, and tasty. Um, and according to, um, to the handbook, it's both evocative and an abstract name. So think of that, what you will. So we started building our MVP web app. We had about um, 80,000 euros in the bank at this point, just like, let's try and build this thing out. Let's start with a web app. So that's Jordan now, he doesn't like this photo, but I kept it in. Uh, and this is him, like, the, the only guy in our tech team building, building that web app for my horrible designs. But I think a key thing for us is that we used, we really leveraged the factory community. And we just posted, like, we're going to give everyone a free donut if they come and test uh, the prototype. And what's great about having a one-person tech team and you know, no overheads is that you can change the, the product within sessions, right? <laughs> so I did four sessions, went to Jordan's like, there's a clear issue here. We changed the flow and we got some new feedback, right? So we started adding this screen, which I was trying to design there. Um, and we added that into the flow and, and actually had a much positive, more positive experience for our users. So what did we learn from this web app? So they want to see the platform before they put money in. So a lot of financial products really funnel you down this like onboarding flow, which you can't escape. You can't see the product unless you give them all your information uh, before you join. So we're going to try and reverse that completely, which could go either way. I'll let you know maybe in the next talk. Um, but we want to open the app up and show them all the features before they get going. Uh, users want to test the product without committing. Trust is really key. Who are you guys? How's my money secured? Um, education is really important, and as is important as investing. So how can we really educate people into how these assets work, how investing works? Um, as they go through the process. And yeah, don't let's bring all the users to the um, And then we launched Making Dough. So this is a, it's a blog, it just basically tells, uh, tells our users how we're building, why we're building it, and what we're building um, for them. Um, this is great 